Good morning, peeps. Uh, it is this today. It's Thursday, the twelfth of August, and uh, pretty excited about what all we're uh, what all we're talking about today. And this is just a continuation of yesterday's devotional. Um, as you saw the title is "Sacrifice Before God, Part 2. The scripture for today is Isaiah fifty-eight verses five through ten. Tomorrow we'll be finishing up the fifty-eighth chapter, which will be good as well. But here's what the prophet Isaiah writes. <clears throat> Remember we talked about yesterday about um, uh, fasting and sacrificing and what all that meant. Today we're going to talk about it, just kind of break it down a little bit more. Um, this is what Isaiah writes. He says, Is it a fast that I've chosen a day for a man to f afflict his soul? And this is God talking to Isaiah. Is it to bow down his head like a bulrush and to spread out sackcloth and ashes? Would you call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? Is this not the fast that I have chosen? Now listen, this is what God writes. These are the fasts that he's chosen. To loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, and that you bring your, uh, to your house the poor who are cast out, when you see the naked that you cover him, and not hide yourself from your own flesh? Then your light shall break forth like the morning, and your healing shall spring forth speedily, and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger, and speaking wickedness, if you extend your soul to the hungry, and satisfy, satisfy the afflicted soul, then your light shall dawn in the darkness, and your darkness shall be as the noonday. I mean, this how beautiful is this? I mean, I'm telling you, I, this this word right here just I mean, it just gets me going. I, it's one of the most beautiful things that I, I feel that God could say to us. And so, <clears throat> let's just kind of break it down just a little bit, right? We, uh, I've always been taught. And uh, when I've thought about fasting, I either thought about, you know, two of the main fast, major fasts that I've thought about was either in the life of Gandhi, right? Gandhi, uh, they had the caste system and the class system of uh, in India, and uh, where people were just treated as, um, <clears throat> they were treated as less than human almost. Uh, we've had slavery in our own land, and where. Uh, people were property and not uh, individual rights, which we've gotten over, and uh, have done a great job with that. But India still has a lot of these issues. But if you remember, Gandhi fasted before the government and before the people, and refused to eat until the government made some changes. And he did do some great stuff over there in India, and that that's a good thing. But it was incomplete because see what Gandhi did, he did before man. Uh, he called the fast before man, and so that the men would take notice. And men would feel guilt for what they were doing and how they were doing it. And because the people so loved Gandhi as he walked across the land and met with people and, and uh, went to the, uh, the, the salt lakes and, and things like that. And, you know, he gained the attention of the people. And then when he fasted, the government knew how much the people loved Gandhi and they didn't want an uprising on their hands. So they took notice and and worked with Gandhi to provide some better situations for the people of India. Those are great things, but it's incomplete for this reason. See if then I if so that's the one let me go into the second one. That's the first fast. The second fast I think about is the fast of Jesus <clears throat> prior to the Father releasing him into ministry. If you remember, Jesus um, was baptized uh, by John, and then immediately the Holy Spirit led him up into the wilderness where he fasted for 40 days and nights, and he didn't eat anything. Now, that's all we hear about, right? Except we know that the devil tempted him during that time. But other than that, we understand, you know, there's a clear difference here. Gandhi fasted before men. Jesus fasted before God the Father. He didn't do it for any recognition of men. And because of that, then God then could take notice and bless all of his ventures beyond his wildest imaginations, I would imagine. I mean, he just, as he watched the Father work in the, in the people and through him, I mean, he was completely God in the fact that he was indwelled by the Holy Spirit. He was the Son in human form. Uh, but uh, just how glorious of a, 
of a ministry Jesus had and the way that he was able to cast out demons and perform miracles and everything else and we have gotten it so backwards you know we're, we're very narcissistic as a society we're me centered and um, last night I was even watching a show talking about how you know even our, our teachings to, to our children to teach that everybody's unique and special and this and that how it's almost led you know this whole self-esteem push that we've pushed towards our children that it's pushed our children to grow up thinking me first and everything has got to revolve around me and it becomes this narcissistic society well you know things haven't changed over the last even uh, talked about that yesterday nothing's changed over the last few thousand years I mean human nature is human nature it's human nature is human nature it's always about taking care of me first but this is not what God says God says look fasting is not about just denying yourself something to eat and walking before men so that men take notice of you and that you would uh, you know other people go wow he's really spiritual he fasts a lot that's not what God's about at all God's about our hearts and when he changes our hearts then he has a vessel he can use and when our hearts are changed like that and our hearts become malleable like clay that's watered down and and that's moldable then he then can fashion us as he needs to meet the needs of his people and so that's what we need to be thinking about so what's the purpose of fasting I mean Jesus said it clearly or Isaiah did here he said to loosen the bonds of or this is what God and Isaiah wrote God told him to loosen the bonds of wickedness to undo heavy burdens to let the oppressed go free and to break the yokes of slavery also to share our food with the hungry and to share our homes with the poor that have no place to go that we should clothe those that have need and that we would open ourselves up to family and friends I mean this 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 pretty much would tie into all of us and so there's really no excuse not to to be sharing see what God wants in our fasting and this is so beautiful what God has opened up in my mind to this is the same thing Jesus taught I mean it's about putting others first when we take care of others needs see we fast or uh, you know even you know you'd see the scribes and the Pharisees uh, and Jesus correcting them what happens is, especially in the spiritual world, and Christians, we do this all the time, it's pitiful because we fast because we have a certain thing we want God to be obliged to, ob you know, or be obligated to do, to do for us. And we think that our spiritual sacrifice is going to get the notice of God and therefore he's going to release things to us. I've been guilty of doing that myself. But what I realized after reading this and going through this, and I love what God's sharing with me, is that it is not about me. I don't fast so that God can do something for me. My fast is more about my actions towards others. You know, that's what fasting's about. If I'm going to withhold food for myself, well, let me share the food that I have with somebody that doesn't have anything. If I'm going to withhold, um, you know, buying a, an outfit that I really like, well, let me go buy an outfit for somebody else and bless them with it. You know, and it's about helping and blessing others. And when we start to do that, then we see what God says he's going to do. That our righteousness will spring forth. That our help, God, we will cry out and he will hear. And that our darkness will be made as a noonday, meaning there's no darkness within us. There is no time where we feel alone and scared in the dark. That God himself will shine his light and his love upon us brightly. That's a beautiful thing. That's what I'm aiming for. And the way that I get there is to take my eyes off myself, stop worrying about what's going on in my life, and start blessing others in the midst of their trials and tribulations. This is I'm telling this is everything that Jesus taught that Isaiah God spoke to Isaiah so long ago and we still don't get it. And it's a shame, but I I, I imagine, I, I pray that that if there's one message that the church could hear, it would be something along these lines so that we could understand. I believe we'd see a mighty revolution uh, in and around our world. You think about it this way, right? So many people are worried about our government heading towards socialism. The government's only doing what the church has neglected to do. You know, redistribution of wealth will not work because it's still passing wealth through men's hands. And what we have to think about is that the only reason the government's doing it is because the church has neglected it. But what if our Christian churches around this country uh, and around the world would start meeting others' needs before their own? What do you think would happen? What kind of revolution? What if you and I, just you watching this video and me, focus ourselves on blessing others before blessing ourselves? What if, well, I mean, imagine what revolution that could have. That's sharing the love of Christ. 
right? Jesus fed out of his nothingness. He fed the 5,000 with a few loaves and a few uh, bread and a few fish on multiple occasions. So what if you and I took this to heart and we did make changes in our lives? I'm telling you, we'll see a revolution. We will see Christ being glorified amongst us and uh, he will get his glory and honor out of it and we will be blessed beyond anything we could ever imagine. That's my prayer for you. That's my prayer for me that we might see the, the glory of the church really fall on the church and the Holy Spirit come, come to his fruition and, and operate in the fullness of all of his gifts. Be blessed today. Uh, rally the troops, man. Share this message. Share the love. Bless other people. Y'all have a great day.